Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check two new products by Toolkit RC, a servo tester and the watt meter. In this video I'm going to briefly go over the features of the ST8 servo tester which I might feature in a different video and I'm going to focus on the WM150 watt meter. So first of all what are these products all about? The ST8 servo tester is a very sophisticated device. It features eight programmable output channels allows you to use multiple input sources using multiple measurement modes and its input voltage is between 7 to 28 volts at a maximum power of 100 watts. The wattmeter is a simpler device but more useful at least for me. It allows you to measure up to 150 amperes with a continuous current of 80 amperes. It features a PWM output and its input voltage is between 1 to 50 volts. In terms of packaging, along with both products, you can find the user manual and a USB to micro USB cable, which is used both for powering the device and also for updating its firmware. Once connecting either the wattmeter or the server tester to your computer, they are going to be recognized as a flash storage device. And by simply copying a new firmware file to the newly discovered device, the firmware is going to be updated. In terms of features, on the top side of both devices, you can find a color 2.4 inch LCD screen. Operating the servo tester is done using this rotatable and clickable dial and an exit button. In addition, you can also find on its right side this knob, which can be found also on the wattmeter. Next to this knob on the servo tester, you can find a micro USB port and a Signal 5 input port for PWM, SBUS and PPM signals. The DC input of the servo tester is between 7 to 28 volts and if you'd like you can also power it using 5 volts via the micro USB connector. On the left side of the servo tester you can find 8 male servo connectors and an XT60 male connector. The maximum voltage when using the servo connectors is 8.4 volts with a maximum current of 2 amperes so if you'd like to use higher voltage or higher current you will need to use the XT60 connector. Now I've got the servo tester powered up and I also connected a motor and an ESC to the XT60 power output and to the Signal 4 servo port. The screen is pretty bright and easy to read and on its top part you'll be able to find data including the temperature of the servo tester, the voltage of the connected battery and the voltage of the power output. Short pressing the exit button is going to either pause or resume the activity of the servo tester and when the activity is paused, you can access the setup screen by long pressing the OK button. Over here, you'll be able to set the cycle value, the voltage output, which is by default set to off. So you can set it between 5 volts all the way up to 28 volts. Next, you can set the cycle count, lowest input value for the connected battery, safe temperature. You can set the backlight between 1 all the way up to 10. You can turn on the buzzer and set its tone. You can change the language between English and Chinese. You can calibrate the knob. You can clear the cycle count and you can restore the default settings. Now I've got the power output set to 12 volts and I can control the speed of the motor by rotating the knob which is located on the right side of the servo tester. Short pressing the OK button while the servo is not paused is going to enable you to switch between different inputs for controlling the servo. When it's set to P1, the knob on the right side is going to control its speed and you can also change it to different values including internal tester. So as you can see now it is linearly toggling between 920 to 1131 values. You can also set it to switch between these values at a stage. So it's going to toggle between 920 and 1131 values. Now it's back to linear. And over here you can also set the steps timing between 10 all the way down to 1. And you can also adjust the speed between 10 milliseconds all the way down to 1 millisecond. In addition, you can also set the input to signal 5. And then you can choose between PWM, PPM and SBUS signals. And again, the signal 5 is the port over here on the right side of the servo tester. So what you can do is to connect it to a receiver and then use it in order to control the input of the connected servo. 
As I mentioned before, this is a pretty advanced product and I didn't cover all of its features and if you have any specific question, please let me know and I will do my best to answer it. The wm 150 wattmeter is a less complicated product. It supports a source voltage of up to 50 volts and can measure up to 150 amperes, which is pretty impressive. On its right side, you can find this knob that will enable you to adjust the PWM signal, which is outputted through this servo connected over here. Next to it, you can find a micro USB port that will enable you to update the firmware of the wattmeter. And actually, by the time of editing this video, a new firmware is now out, and I recommend to update the firmware in case you have the stock version. On the top side of the wattmeter, you can find the source and load 12 gauge wires, and you should note that the wattmeter does not come with battery connectors. Now, in order to test the wattmeter, I'm going to connect the load to the SDT FD200 small discharger, and the source is going to be connected to a battery. After powering up the wattmeter, you're going to get to this screen. Over here, you can see the current ampere and watts that are being drawn from the battery, and over here, the maximum value. On the right side, you can see the signal cycle for the PWM output. Next to it, the pulse, which is set by rotating the knob on the right side. So you can set its value all the way up to 2000 and all the way down to 1000. Next, you can see the voltage of the connected battery, the consumed amount of battery capacity in milliampere hour, and finally over here, you can find the timer. Now let's connect the load connector to the SDT FD200 smart discharger. And now let's power it up. Set the battery to 4S and the load to 25 ampere. Let's start it up and it's going to get a little bit loud. And now you can see that the current is climbing. And now, as you can see, the battery was fully discharged to storage mode by the ISDT discharger, and somehow the maximum measured current was only 13.2 amperes, even though the ISDT discharger was set to 25 amperes, and the maximum power was 203 watts. Let's run another quick test. So now I've got this battery powering up the charger, and in between I placed the watt meter. So let's use it in order to charge this battery at 3 amperes. And after starting the task, you can see that the ampere meter is climbing. And as you can see, these two values are very close. So overall, I think that this is a very nice tool to have. And its only downside, in my opinion, is that it doesn't enable you to log the data to an onboard memory or to a micro SD card. And I wish that this feature is going to be added in the future. So that's going to be it for this video. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.